this video, I'm going to show you how we can use audiences in the Facebook Ads Manager platform. We'll dive into the different types of audiences and how we can use them effectively in your next ad campaign. Establishing your Facebook audiences before you start to run your campaigns is a really good way of setting yourself up for success. So in this video, we'll be sure to walk through all the different options that we have to set up your audiences. I mean, really, your campaign is only going to be as good as how you set up your audience and targeting. So it's always good practice to make sure that we understand who our audiences are before we even start any advertising. So that being said, let's jump into the Facebook ads platform and learn about how we can use our audiences. So to get started, we'll access the audiences. Go ahead and select all tools and click on audiences. And this will load up your audience manager. Now we're in the audience manager platform. We can see all of the different audiences that we've created listed here. If we want to create a new audience, we can go ahead and select create audience button. And we will see that there are three different options, custom audience, look like audience and saved audience. Um, so starting with custom audience, we'll go ahead and select this. And custom audiences are broken down into two different categories, uh, audiences that we can create based on your sources. Uh, and then audiences that are that we can create that are based on meta sources. Starting with our sources, there is website. So if you have a pixel placed on your website, we can create an audience that will be uh, reflective of people who are visiting our website. Same is true for app activity. So anybody who's had any sort of activity on the app that we created, expressed interest in our catalog. Uh, maybe we uploaded a customer list from our you know, a CSV file that we exported from our C CRM. And then there's offline activity. For meta sources specifically, this is mainly focused on activities that have happened on the meta platform itself. So if someone has viewed one of our videos or filled out a lead form, um, experienced one of our instant experiences, AR experience, um, seen one of our on, on Facebook listings and interacted with it, followed our Instagram account, maybe they have responded to an event, have liked our Facebook page or engaged in a shopping experience with our page. So we can create audiences using these sources. And so when we create an audience using one of these sources, we can then target that specific audience using our Facebook ad campaigns. So next we'll look at lookalike audiences and what lookalike audiences are you're telling the Facebook ads platform that you have an audience, you know, website visitors that are people who have visited your website. And say we want to target people who are similar to those people. We can select that as the lookalike source if that's in place. And in this case it is, we have the pixel placed on the website that we're using and we'll go ahead and select the pixel. And then we can we can effectively create a lookalike audience. Purchase is recommended here. So we can then select our audience location and we can look at countries or we can look at regions, which are free trade areas, app store regions, emerging markets. Then once we do that, we can select our audience size and the number of audiences that we want to test out. So if we wanted to only grab you know, one sample of this, this audience, we can select one or we can do uh, more than that if we'd like to. And then, once we finish that, we can look at the size of the lookalike audience. At 1% lookalike audience, we're, we're basically uh, as close to the, the initial source audience as we can get. The more we expand this, it creates a, a much bigger, broader audience, and we get further away from uh, you know, the granularity of the audience that, that we're, we're interested in, um, in attracting people like. So that is how our lookalike audiences work. So the last audience, so we have our saved audience here. And with our saved audience, we can name it. So if we wanted to say audience uh, number one, we can, after we name it, we'll go ahead and select the locations. So first we wanna look at this people living in or recently in this location. Like are the people that we're trying to get in front of in a specific area because they live there. Like we're trying to get in front of residents of a specific area who have decision-making power for, for something that you have to offer that's specific to that geographic region. Or are we going after tourists in a certain area who may have visited a certain landmark or something like that? So, so this is a way that we can, we can really establish, um, you know, and, and make choices that way. Uh, so say we wanted to get in front of people who live in Washington, D.C. 
Um, so we would select not living in or recently in this location, but instead we would select people living in this location. Now we can look at geographic locations. So once we've established that we want people living in this location, we'll take away the United States. We can browse, um, we can look at, you know, Washington, DC. So we'll go ahead and do that. And boom, even though it's not a state, it still is talked about as being a state. So we'll select that and we'll see Washington, DC show up on the map, which is awesome. Once we've done that, we, want to think about our age ranges, right? So what we're advertising, is it relevant to people who are 18? Or maybe we're looking at, uh, you know, an age range of 30 to 61 or something like that. Is, is what we're selling relevant to the age range? I, I think this is important. Next, we can look at gender. So is, is our product specific to everyone, to all genders? Or is it only specific to, you know, to women or men? Uh, <clears throat> So that's, that's something that we can do here. Um, we can also choose to target people who have their browser set in a specific language. And so that's one way to do this here. If we're not interested in doing that, we can just leave it blank. Next, we have our detail targeting where we can start to add information about demographics. We can get specific about demographics, the interests, uh, and behaviors of the users that we're trying to target. In looking at this category, so within demographics, we have education, we have financial, life events, parents, uh, relationship, and work. This is where it gets interesting. This is where we want to spend a lot of time. And, and as we're doing this, always keep in mind that we want to target people and we want to start in a broad sort of way. And then once we start to see success, we hone in on where we're seeing that success. And then we can start to get specific and, and more granular with things. So say we're trying to get in front of educators specifically, right? So teachers who work in a school, you know, K through 12. One way to do this is to look at job titles. Okay, so we can search job titles like educator, okay? And we don't see educator pop up, but we see parent educator, okay? That's not necessarily what we're looking for. Maybe we, we look at teacher. We don't have teacher specifically, but we have high school teacher. So here's a trick. Once we select high school teacher, the Facebook platform will say, okay, now I can give you some suggestions. So we'll hit suggestions. And once you hit that, even though we typed in teachers before to target and it didn't pop up, in the suggestions, we'll see all sorts of job titles pop up. And, and look at that right there, we have teachers on our teacher on the top. So I'll go ahead and make that selection, um, middle school, elementary, right? And we can get crazy with it if we want. As we're making these selections, you know, we wanna think a little bit more about our audience, the different traits that this audience has, right? So if we know that if they're an educator, they probably have a certain level of education. So we'll go ahead and maybe we want to exclude anybody who doesn't have an education level of, so we'll, we'll take out in college maybe, because usually people who, you know, in most states, I think college is a requirement of, of being a teacher. Um, maybe we want to exclude in high school, so that way we don't capture any high school students. Uh, we can leave in grad school, I think that's fine, but maybe we take out some high school and we'll take out some college too. So now that we've done that, we've really narrowed it down. We're looking at teachers in Washington, D.C., ages 30 to 61. Education level uh, is excluded in high school, in college, some college or some high school. So we've taken out that demographic and we've also matched it as people who have the job title of high school teacher, teacher in middle school, or teacher in elementary school. Now, at the beginning of this, I indicated that it's, it's smart to, to really start broad, right? And I think, I think that's, that's worth a try because now we've, we've targeted kind of a, you know, a, a small area, but Washington DC does have a very large population. So in theory, our audience size should be quite large, but it's not. So what we're gonna do is back out of the job title strategy, which um, you know, isn't always the best strategy. 
and we'll jump back into our demographics and we'll go to work and then we'll go to industries and instead of going by job title we'll look at education and libraries and what this is as you can see in the description here is people with roles in education or libraries so examples include educator instructor teacher professor lecturer research assistant tutor librarian principal etc so we'll go ahead and make that selection you can see the audience size kind of jumped up a little bit so that was one one little tweak that we made here so now we want to get our audience size a little bit bigger so we can run these ads properly so i'm thinking educators might start at 25 and then maybe we do 65 plus because you know there are some some older teachers out there if we're we're not really able to search only in washington dc maybe we look at the dmv as a whole and include maryland and virginia okay so now that we've done that we have the DMV set up and our audience size is, is actually not too bad now. So then once we have this established, we can, we can actually name this educators in the DMV and then we can create the saved audience. And now we have an audience that we can actually run ads with. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this.